Joining me now is Sam Stein, political reporter for The Huffington Post. Thanks for joining me tonight, Sam. Hey, thanks for having me. Sam, this is a new tone. This is, uh, this is you've been covering the White House. You, the, the, everyone recognized right away yesterday that we haven't seen this before. Yeah, and I think uh, Pfeiffer's quote, Dan Pfeiffer, the communications director, his quote gets at a dynamic in the White House, which is they felt very captive, uh, some sort of uh, imprisoned by the debt ceiling debate. They thought the president's advisors told them, in fact, that between the 2010 elections and the 2012 elections, that was the one thing that could really trip them up. And they obviously didn't want uh, the Treasury to default on its loans. Now that that's behind them, they don't feel quite so imprisoned anymore. They feel like they could navigate the budget battles on, on, the, uh, on the assertive. And, uh, and you see that when the president, instead of uh, sort of preemptively compromising or conceding points on whether it's Social Security or Medicare eligibility age, uh, he's actually saying to the speaker, you have to come to me if you want to get those reforms. And it seems to me that they reached a point strategically where they just said to themselves in the White House, what have we got to lose? We yeah. have approached them in a compromising way in the past. We've tried to design proposals that would have some attracting points to Republicans at the outset. Uh, we've gotten nowhere with that. It's never worked. What's the alternative? One of the alternatives is actually putting out the plan that you really would like to pass. Sure. And, and let's not kid ourselves. They're not going to pass this plan. They're going to move off of it. Uh, but this is a starting point of the negotiations. Go back to August when it was just uh, the president and House Speaker Boehner. You got the sense that Obama desperately wanted the House Speaker to take that grand bargain, which included raising eligibility age of Medicare, which included uh, reforming the payment structure of Social Security, in part because he needed a vehicle to just get the debt ceiling raised. Nowadays, when you're looking at the uh, Super Committee and its legislation, there's a totally different tone to this. Now it's Obama saying to Boehner, listen, if you want to get those things that I dangled in front of you last August, you're going to have to give me something. And there's nothing that they can lose. Because because he knows that Boehner can't go back to his caucus uh, and say, all right, let's let those triggers be pulled. Let's let massive defense cuts happen. He knows that Boehner's in a bind here. And the expectation is that the House Republican caucus is going to actually have to meet them on revenues. So the thing that's, that's at their backs that, can, that, that is going to force them into some kind of conversation is yeah. that very harsh trigger that's already yes. built into law. Yeah, you get, that, that is a very harsh trigger for both sides. Obviously, it includes a, a, a ton of defense cuts that the defense industry has warned against, that Obama's own uh, defense secretary has warned against. It also includes uh, hundreds of billions of dollars in Medicare cuts and additional spending cuts that neither side really wants to see pulled. Now, there are uh, some uh, chatter on the Hill as to whether the charter for the super committee can be amended. C uh, triggers are meant to not be pulled. You also remember, you have a year until they're actually pulled. The super committee is supposed to report out and have a vote by the end of December. That said, the triggers aren't pulled until the turn of 2013. So there's a way to get around it. But the expectation from everyone that I talk to inside the administration and outside of it, as well as on the Hill, is that this is going to compel the sides to go to the table. The key thing that Obama did was he said he would veto a plan that the Super Committee proposed that had Medicare cuts but didn't have revenue. So he set a marker in there that there's got to be revenues if you want to seriously tackle entitlement reforms. That is, going forward, that's going to be critical to see how long he sticks to that veto threat. So, Sam, you would say that the veto threat was actually targeted at the Super Committee. Yes, because keep in mind, there was uh, two days before Speaker Boehner gave a speech where he insisted that revenues couldn't be on the table. This was a direct response to that. And it said to the super committee members, listen, there's two people in this, in this dance. You can listen to the House Speaker, but if you send me something that doesn't have revenues but cuts Medicare, I'm sending it right back and I'll risk the triggers. So, yeah, I think it's targeted to the members on the super committee. It lets them know that this isn't just a congressional exercise. This is an executive branch exercise as well. Well, it also raises the possibility of would the super committee be willing to put out a plan that would be, in, essential, in essence, steering toward a veto, basically challenging the president, you know, will you actually veto this? Because the super committee's work yeah. product, if it gets out, is procedurally protected. It, it can Correct. pass relatively easily. And I think there's a, there's a general consensus on the Hill that the super committee wants their product to move fast. They don't want it to linger out there for a year, during which time we think we're having a lobbying battle right now with the super committee. If it, if it hangs out there for a while, that lobbying is just going to intensify. Keep in mind, there also is not, not, it's not entirely certain that it would pass the Senate if it didn't have revenue increases. I know that Democrats are prone to capitulation in that chamber. Right. However... 
Harry Reid has, has insisted that revenue has to be part of the component, and he does still have more than 50 votes. So that's, that is another consideration they have to take. Sam Stein of the Huffington Post, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Thanks, Lawrence.